Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. I'm Lydia, the Halfling Seamstress. So if you've seen my 1895 walking skirt video, you'll know I had a decent amount of plaid wool left over and I was feeling like I absolutely needed some kind of matching thing for the top half of an outfit. It's officially winter time here in Canada and since it's not yet that bitter cold where you need to wear like 17 layers to feel warm, Plus, at the time this video comes out, it is the Christmas season, therefore, it is the perfect time for a swooshy cape. So, join me on my unnecessarily chaotic journey as I make an Edwardian-ish cozy swooshy cape. As basic cape patterns have changed very little in the last hundred plus years, I skipped any fancy drafting and went with an easy circle cape pattern. I measured down to my wrists, and then secured my measuring tape and marked out a quarter circle on my paper. Then I took my neck measurement and divided it by four and marked that out in a semicircle. I marked about a half inch out from the edge of the pattern for seam allowance. Since I wanted a cape that was both pretty and warm, I knew just using the wool and lining fabric wouldn't quite cut it. So I also cut an inner lining from a thick cotton canvas type fabric. This also helps give the cape some extra body. To cut down on bulk, I decided to interline the wool and inner lining, so I basted them together so they'd act as one fabric. I basted all the way around the edges, and then added large pad stitching in the middle to help keep everything in place. Then I seamed the wool and inner lining together. Since this is a historical-ish project, I wanted to use my antique sewing machine. I really am enjoying this beauty more than my modern machine. And then of course my bobbin ran out close to the end of the last seam, so instead of re-threading my bobbin, I figured it was just faster to backstitch it by hand. I trimmed the inner lining seam allowances down so that I could fold over the wool and keep it from being bulky. Then I pressed the seams open and overcast the wool edges. This is a lined cape, so it wasn't necessary in order to keep the fabric from fraying, but it did make the seam allowances lie flat. I trimmed all the inner lining fabrics down by about half, then folded the wool over them. Then I stitched it down with running back stitches, that is, a running stitch with a single back stitch every few stitches. This is more secure than just a running stitch, helps keep everything in place, and by stitching it down like this, I don't have to finish off the wool edges. I had originally planned to have the cape close one side over the other, but as you'll see, I scrapped that plan. With the original design in my head, I decided to top stitch one side since that was going to be the main front piece. Cool plan, but you don't actually see it all that well anyway, so it doesn't matter that the other side is just running back stitched. Then I could take out the basting stitches. Then for the proper lining. I used a lovely silk Bemberg for this, and while it wrinkles like crazy, it was lovely to sew with. I had originally planned to sew up the seams on my machine, but I'm still getting the hang of it and wasn't sure how it would handle the delicate Bemberg, so I decided to seam it by hand. After I got a little way down, I secured the fabric to my pants leg. This gives tension against the sewing and helps keep things even and speeds up the sewing process. Now for some decoration. I knew I wanted the cape to have some ribbon trim and I found some lovely blue velvet ribbon that complemented it perfectly. However, I didn't want to be able to see the stitches from the inside, so I had to sew on the ribbon before I lined it. I hemmed and hawed for a while about design, but ultimately decided that since this was my first time attempting trim like this, I'd keep it simple. I planned for the ribbon to be one inch from each edge, and originally I pinned everything in place, but I quickly realized that the pins were actually warping how the ribbon sat, so I ended up thread marking where I wanted the bottom edge of the ribbon to sit, and then just holding it in place as I sewed. This gave me a much better result, and I only wish I had figured it out sooner. 
I also wish I had figured out sooner that three yards of ribbon wouldn't be enough for the cape. Like, not remotely. So I had to put sewing on hold while I waited for my order from Michaels to arrive. Thankfully it did in just a couple days and I was able to pick right back up again. I used blue silk thread to sew on the ribbons, going first along the top edge and then along the bottom edge. I still need to practice mitered corners, but these turned out pretty good. After all the ribbons were stitched down, I ironed all the edges to help smooth out any bumps and puckers and give the bottom edge a nice crisp look. Then I carefully pressed out the seams of the lining, which looks pretty, but turned out to be a moot point and kind of a waste of time. I will spare you the footage of the three plus hours I spent folded in a pretzel shape on the floor trying desperately to figure out the lining situation. Somehow, despite every single piece of the cape being cut out using the exact same symmetrical pattern, the lining went all kinds of wonky when I tried to pin it in. I ended up ripping out the lining seams and pinning in the pieces individually, which still should have worked a-okay, no problemo here, but it still wanted to shift around and sit in bizarre configurations. It took a lot of patience, finicky pinning, some tears, and a break for Chinese food, but at last I got the two outer pieces pinned in right. Then it was just a matter of felling down all the way around with tiny whip stitches as inconspicuous as possible. This was a very satisfying and calming process. Except for that one moment when I randomly dropped my needle and couldn't find it for a hot minute. With the two sides sewn in, and looking slightly reminiscent of that 90s toy where you try to memorize and repeat increasingly difficult color patterns, anyone remember that? It was time to pin in and sew the middle lining. The neck edge was finicky to put in place, so I decided to try out my new sewing clips. 10 out of 10, highly recommend. This was also the project that taught me it is okay to wax silk thread. It was a game changer and made all these little seams so much easier. I decided for the middle seams that instead of felling them down with a whip stitch, they would stay in place better with the back stitches. For the closure, I went back and forth on a couple ideas before looking at some historical fashion plates and deciding on a double button method, closed with a bar of fabric that has buttonholes sewn in. For the underside, I used some raw silk from my Aowen dress, and for the outer side, I used a scrap of my cape wool because... matching. I folded the edges to a point, then trimmed them down slightly, and then I whipped the edges down, making sure not to go through to the front side. Then I used more matching ribbon to trim the edges. Again, 10 points for sewing clips. They're really earning their keep on this project. Then I whipped the ribbon down first on the front side, then on the back. Ta-da! So at this point, the cape was pretty much done. I just had to finish the closure and it was all set, right? Huh, <laughs> wrong. It was stupid o'clock at night and I was looking at this project and my very overtired brain went, you know, what this cape needs is more cowbell or at least a collar. And 
Yeah, it really looked like it was missing something with the neck edges just turned under. So I pulled out the collar piece from my American Duchess cape pattern, tailored it a bit to fit the slightly different curve of this cape, unpicked the neck area, and stitched it on. Then I went back and stitched down the lining again. It was a lesson in fitting things carefully and also totally winging an idea because you think it will look good. And it does look good, if I do say so myself. And because this cape project wasn't chaotic enough already, I decided to add just one more thing. When I was looking through my Pinterest inspiration board for how to close this sucker, I took a closer look at this fine lady and realized that in her cape, she has a pocket. It is a well-established fact in the historical costuming community that one can never have enough pockets. So you know I had to add a pocket to this cape. I knew I wanted this pocket to be long enough to hold an iPhone without fear of it falling out. It also had to be wide enough for my hand to fit in comfortably. Hey, look at me filming one-handed on a real camera like a real vlogger for professional reasons, and not at all because I needed the iPhone I normally film on to measure the size I wanted the pocket to be. Once I was happy with the size, I marked out a second piece as well to give the pocket extra stability. I pinned the pieces together. Thankfully, the seam allowance showed through just enough to give me a guideline. Okay, that's enough handheld vlogging for now. Back to iPhones and tripods. I basted the pieces together as well, since Benberg is real slippery. Off camera, I folded the top edge under twice and backstitched along the edge to make the pocket hem. Then I played around with where would be best on the cape for this pocket to sit. Once I was happy, I turned under the edges and pinned them down. Then I backstitched around the three edges. Technically, felling the edges down would have been a little less noticeable, but I feel like it would have also been less secure. And I wanted to make sure anything I put into the pocket stayed there. Once the pocket was sewn down, I took the basting threads out. I don't know why, but there's something oddly satisfying about taking out basting threads. For the final bit of the closure, I marked out the width of the buttons, snipped the length, and then went in with thick silk thread to make a pair of buttonholes. And with that, my lovely yet overly complicated and totally chaotic swooshy cape is finally complete. Now that it is finished, I love it wholeheartedly, and I'm so glad to have it in my wardrobe. But man! It's like I kept making things harder for myself at every single turn. Oh well, every project is a learning opportunity. And now, at last, it's time to take this cape out for a spin.